So this is what we're going to be building right here. It's sort of this flowy, very vibrant wind or airflow effect. And I'm going to show you how to build that in DaVinci Resolve. All native, no plugins. Let's get into it. So this is my ERI airflow preset. And uh, right from the beginning, you'll notice there's uh, a few controls here. You can change things like the main colors and where exactly the airflow is positioned at. Now, I will tell you that this airflow is built using a bunch of particles, like a lot of particles, particle systems inside of Fusion. So it is a little slow to react to things, but that's okay. You just got to give your computer a chance to catch up and uh, maybe render cache like I am right now. You could see here that particles are populating and filling in. And as it, they do that, uh, the airflow appears to get brighter to a point. But there is strategy used in how we deploy this in our footage and whatnot so i'm going to show you guys exactly how this comes together so with this on my timeline i'm just going to press the little fusion button right here this will take us into fusion where we can see the the airflow i'm going to open this up and ungroup it this is what the node tree looks like so i'm just going to walk through this with you guys to start with we have a particle emitter Okay, now I have this particle emitter set to follow a, a path of a mask that I have, and that's this Bezier mask right here, right? So it just follows this path. So if I want to change like the direction it's moving in, you'll see it follows the path right here. And I can add more points if I want, if I need it to fill like a very specific sort of shape. So that's really nice. That uh, is in the particle emitter region settings set to bitmap. When you set it to bitmap, then you get the background input and then you add your, your mask path and whatnot. Works great. Uh, number I have set to 4,000. Uh, number variance, none. Lifespan, 150. So over the course of 150 frames, you are completely replacing the number of particles you have. Lifespan, variance, none. Color, use style color. That's determined here. We're going to get into color later on down in the note tree here. But uh, I want to continue going over what I have here. Size controls, I literally just have it at point 0.1, right? So you don't need to make it anything crazy. Within style, set to the blob mode. Style, set to blob. Uh, there's a bunch of different things that you can do. Uh, I just found that for this, uh, for whatever reason, blob works best in terms of like rendering things and render speed and stuff like that and just getting the desired look. So yeah, I'll show you guys these settings right here, but I'm again, making this free for download so you can just grab it and use it however you want. Anyways, particle emitter feeds into particle render, which then feeds into a blur node. So I'll show you what it looks like before and without the blur. Like it just looks kind of there, you know? You add the blur and it gives it some, some style, it gives it some look. But here's where things get interesting based on how nodes work, right? Uh, you can output multiple outputs from a single node. Uh, and that's exactly what I did here because this is a, a bunch of layers. This, uh, this here is com comprised of multiple layers and you can actually see that here. So you see I have one, two, three and four inputs all feeding into this multi-merge node, right? So if I turn off all of them except one, you can see this is what one layer looks like. Turn on another, that's what this one looks like. You add some color and then you add some more color after that. It's stacking these different things on top of each other, but they all follow this same path, or that's how, they, that's how I set it up. Out of blur, out of path one, uh, we make three different clones. So do you take path one, you add your three different clones, you have four inputs, and that's what we see here in this multi-merge. Essentially, what it does is when you output another transform node from the output of a node that you already have, uh, it clones it because you're adding another instance of the thing or you're transforming another instance of whatever that node is after the fact. And that's just what I'm doing right here, right? You see my output comes to another transform node have another erode dilate. So erode dilate is very, very useful uh, when creating this, just because you could see as I move this up and down, it gets fatter or thinner. And there's a lot of control to be had here. And this kind of looks like a lightsaber. It looks really sick. Uh, I'm gonna set that back to what it was, but you either erode things to make them smaller or dilate them to make them bigger. So I you add a transform here. I didn't change anything in the transform settings. This is purely acting as a cloning tool you add the erode dilate, make this one just a little bit bigger. As you can see, I'm in a positive number here. And then I did the same thing two other times, except I'm adding color control here, right? So I add more transform, right? Transform two and transform three. And from there, I feed it into a bitmap background setup. And with this here, you can change color. So watch what happens when I drop green. Color changes here a little bit. I don't know how well that's gonna translate on YouTube. I'm gonna pump up red. You can see I get a different color here and I'm going to pump up red here as well. And now I've changed this to a, kind of like a red airflow. This looks more like heat maybe, right? Instead of wind. 
I'm gonna undo this, set it back to where it was. But that's what's really cool about how this simple no tree works to create this thing, right? So all of these layers, they all feed into this multi-merge here, which then feed into another transform node. This transform node was just used as kind of like a, if I wanna make things bigger, I can. Uh, I didn't end up doing that though, I just kept this here. And then the transform fed into two different glow nodes and then one erode dilate, brought that down quite a bit actually right here. See, I could bring that up. See, this is just too thick for me. So I brought that down here. Now, in terms of controlling what part of your line is visible, just because the path that I showed you first, the airflow path, right, is huge. I mean, it's a big circle, right? So you could see it's like, if I wanna control what part is visible, how do I do that? Well, I'm using erode dilate for that to control the length of our strand of airflow or strand of wind, whatever you wanna call it right? And that's set all the way down to negative one or negative 100%. But if I turn on a mask, I have this mask here, you see this rectangular mask uh, covering about the center of the frame. And what that does is it makes everything visible within the constraints of the mask. So everything outside of the mask is set to negative one. Uh, and everything on the inside is regular how it was. And I've obviously feathered the edges right here, you could see in soft edge, it's 0.148. But if I move this from left to right, you get the effect of it moving. Pretty cool, right? So you could obviously transform this however you want, however you choose. And what's really cool about this, how I set this up, this is a rectangle mask node. So if I wanted to change things a little bit, I could take my corner radius and bump it up here and turn it into a circle. So it just depends on whatever shape you're trying to make with this airflow and how you wanna animate it specifically. I'll cover some examples with you guys. But you know, you can animate all of this to change over time between your center, your width, your height, and your corner radius. You're good, there's plenty of control here. And then just to establish a master thickness control, I put this right here. This is another erode dilate node, uh, but I've labeled this thickness control. So just overall master control right here affects the whole thing uniformly. And that just feeds into a regular merge node and your media out, and this is what you get. Now, in the course of my macro, I did add some controls here. So just your position. Uh, and with my fusion overlay turned on, uh, you can see one of the controls I have is being able to control the shape of the airflow directly from the edit page. So that's super cool. So if you need to reference whatever you're working on or whatever you're adding airflow or wind into, uh, you can see that in your background. For example, I shot some supplemental footage in my backyard. So you could see how with some animation here, uh, there's a lot that you could do with this. So now all from the edit page, I am animating what part is visible and what part isn't. I've animated this to move from left to right past the tree. And you can get a little more advanced with this if you want. This is just a very basic example, just to show you guys what it's capable of. And I I wanted to share that I, I felt compelled to make this plugin or to make this effect uh, to fill in particular, just because particular is such a, like a robust effect and add on that After Effects users have. And I wanted to try to make something like this uh, natively inside of Resolve. So this is something that um, I use somewhat frequently uh, in another one of the jobs that I have, but I thought it was cool and wanted to show it off with you guys and make it available for a free download for you. So maybe you find something useful for it. But one of the other tricks that I wanna show you is something that I was able to pull off right here is you could see that in the background here, this strand of airflow is coming from behind the fence. And I just achieved that really simply. Literally all I did was just add a mask. That's this mask right here. So you could see, I cut off what's visible from the airflow right along the top of the fence, and that's that. It's pretty simple. Uh, but with these techniques, you can generate some pretty cool effects, honestly. So it's all up to you how you use it. Creative's freedom. This is just something that I've wanted to share with you guys for a really long time. So I hope you get something out of it. Go check it out. Go, go to the website, download it for free. You have nothing to lose. Add it to whatever folder you keep all your effects or your macros in, and take it from there. At least you have it in your arsenal. So if whatever pops up, you have it, you need it, use it. So that's all from me today. Leave a like if you like this video, if you learned something, if you're gonna go pick this up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I know there's a bit of an algorithmic push, so maybe you haven't seen me before. I'm glad I got a chance to meet you if you're still watching. I hope you subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if you liked it or didn't like the video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.